Hello, Free K friends. It's so good to be with you today. We're going to listen to a story that we heard in your Pre K classroom when you had Snuggle and Read. But this time, you're going to listen and you're going to be able to snuggle with your cuddly blanket, snuggle maybe with a favorite stuffed animal, and with your special someone to listen to the story of a friend for bear again. Here is the book. Do you recognize it? Does it look familiar? A Friend for Bear by Steve Smallman. And he's the person who wrote the book. He's the author. And our illustrator is Caroline Pedler. And she's the person who drew the beautiful, beautiful pictures in the book. A Friend for Bear. This is our dedication page, and this is our title page. So this book is dedicated for Lavender, who is nearly always full of the joys of spring, and for Catherine, my dancing, surfing, and singing partner in crime, and fellow foodie. I think they like to eat. And the title page has the title of the book and also the author and illustrator. All through the long, cold winter, Bear had kept safe and snug in her den. That was where she lived, a den. Then at last, a warm breeze melted away the forest frost. Bear's eyes blinked open, and she bounced out of bed. There she is. It's spring, she cried, racing outside. Everything was fresh and green and sparkly. Bear felt dizzy with the joy of it all. I want to run and jump and smell flowers and tickle tadpoles, she shouted. And I can't forget twirling. She twirled around so fast. She tripped over a stone. But it wasn't a stone. Hmm. I wonder what it was, boys and girls. Can you see? Do you remember? It was a tortoise. Oops, Daisy said, tortoise, are you all right? Oh, I was just twirling, said Bear, because it's spring. Next, I'm going to roll down a hill, climb trees, and make new friends. Oh, that sounds wonderful, being tortoise. Come with me, suggested Bear. Oh, I couldn't keep up, sighed tortoise. I only have little legs. Oh, that's okay, laughed Bear, lifting tortoise up. I'll give you a piggyback ride. And off they went. See tortoise and Bear? Tortoise is taking a piggyback ride. Look at us go, laughed Tortoise. I've never moved so fast. Can we play, called two fox cubs. But Bear galloped right past them. Bear, cried Tortoise, I thought making new friends was on your list. Oh, it is, replied Bear, but I haven't finished running yet. See how fast Bear is going? See the little fox cubs want to play. They burst into a meadow. Can't we stop and smell the flowers, pleaded Tortoise. No time to stop. Too much to do, laughed Bear. Start smelling. Ouch, scrambled Tortoise at us. A bum bumblebee passed off, bounced off his head. My nose doesn't work at this speed. But Bear was running too fast to hear him. They're in a meadow. Flat piece of land with a lot of grass. Bear finally skidded to a halt at the top of a small hill. Tortoise looked around in wonder. 
I've never been so high, he gasped. I can see the world. Thank you, Bear. This is perfect. Perfect for rolling, finished Bear, and clutching tortoise tightly. Clutching means holding something real tight. She rolled over and over, all the way down the hill. So remember, they were at the top of the hill, and now they're ro they rolled down to the bottom of the hill. So, hmm, I think those are opposites, top and bottom. See them at the top and see them at the bottom. They stopped with a bump at the foot of a tall tree. Time to climb, declared Bear. Oh, no, groaned Tortoise, his head spinning. Can't I just sit on my shoulders? Good idea, finished Bear, and up they went. Mommy Bird was very surprised. Shoo, she flapped. Time to tickle tadpoles, bellowed Bear, to the pond. What a day, puffed Tortoise as he flopped down by the water's edge. Bear dropped down beside him. They watched ducklings and tadpoles playing in the water. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, asked Bear? Yes, sighed Tortoise dreamily. This is the perfect spot. See the duck and the duckling? And Bear and Tortoise sitting. This is the perfect spot to jump from, cheered Bear. Then she grabbed Tortoise and leaped into the pond. Wasn't that great, laughed Bear, scrambling out. But Tortoise had had enough. No, he spluttered. I can't swim. My shell is full of water and I have weeds up my nose. But you wanted to swim, said Bear in surprise. No, I did not snorted tortoise. I don't think he was happy with Bear. You haven't stopped to listen, look, or make friends, he finished. But there's so much to do, cried Bear. I can't stop. Well, you'll have to, declared Tortoise, because it's bedtime. No, howled Bear. I'm not tired. I don't want to go back to bed forever and ever. I want it to be spring again. I don't think Bear is very happy. He thinks he's going to go back to his den forever and ever. Oh, Bear, smiled Tortoise. It's not time to hibernate yet. Tomorrow will still be spring. It will, sniffled Bear. And then I can run and twirl and climb? Yes, nodded Tortoise. And maybe sit and watch, too. Do you think I might make some friends? Bear whispered. Oh, I'm sure you will, chuckled Tortoise. You already found one today. I have? asked Bear. Who? Me, Bear, said Tortoise. Me. The Tortoise and Bear having that conversation. And Bear finding out who his friend was. Bear beamed. Can I give you a ride back home? 
Will it be another fast ride? asked Tortoise. No, chuckled Bear. Let's go slowly this time. I want to smell the flowers. So as the sun set, the two friends wandered slowly all the way home to bed. Thank you, boys and girls, for being such wonderful, wonderful listeners today. And I hope you enjoyed that story, A Friend for Bear, the second time that you heard it. And think about maybe some of the new things that you learned. We'll see you next time. <laughs>